All right, in this section of the video, we're going to take a look at how we can do a few different things. We're going to look at how we can uh, create an object on one side of our model, and then we can actually duplicate that and mirror that across. And uh, we're also going to take a look at um, how you can incorporate that back into your model if you're happy with the results and get it back to be a one piece model. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at subtools and talk about subtools real quick. So if we go under tool, I'm going to close this up so you can see exactly what things might start off to be. So we've got tool. If we go right here to subtool, this is basically our list of different objects that we have um, that we're working together with. You can have multi-pieced objects. Right now we've been working with a one-piece object. And if we want to add another piece to that, and put it in the stack here. You can see there's an append button right here. So let's go ahead and hit that real quick. And if we put it on, let's see, Sphere 3D, we'll do that, click that. And you can see it's added a new object down below our original object. Now, in order to select the new object and start moving it around and start working with it, we have to actually click on this here. So this lets you select which object you're going to be working on. Um, if I put it on the move brush or transpose tool and start to move this around, you can see I can drag this to a new location. So I'm going to scale this down a bit. I need to check that from the front. I'm going to, have to turn on symmetry, so hit X. Every time you add a new object, you're going to have to turn on symmetry for that new object. So let's take a look at scale again and see if I can get a uniform scale. Yes, because I've got the symmetry turned on. Uh, you can see without symmetry turned on, it's going to scale more towards this line over here. So if I tap X to turn on symmetry, then I can go ahead and just scale this down even further. So my goal is to get this positioned maybe maybe actually a little bit lower than the object itself. So I'm going to put it on the move right here. And maybe I'll push that up in here. The location of this is not all that important, but uh, I do want to show you what we can do uh, for creating something on one side and then push it over to the other side. So we've got a new object here in our subtool palette um, and I can go ahead and work with the mesh insert brushes that we took a look at. So you can tap B for brushes, I for insert, and I'm going to use an insert cylinder. Now the cool thing about having this separate object is when we use these mesh insert brushes, it still recognizes this object. So I can drag um, off of this object and it still feels like I'm working with one model. So I'm going to click and drag up and then drag back down to get a cylinder that's nice and thin. So I've got something like this here. but I'm going to hit undo real quick because I want to turn off symmetry. I only want to do it on one side. Um, nor you could do this with symmetry, but I want to show you this example of what if you forget about working with symmetry and you want to get something on one side mirrored over to another. So I just drew that out and uh, I'm going to put this on rotate. I'm going to click and drag with the transpose tool or the rotate brush, whatever you want to call it and I'm going to rotate this down like so. And I'm going to click and drag here, get rotated here, click and drag here. I'm just trying to match this angle a little bit. And once I do that, I'm going to click and drag this a little bit and move my line. And I'm going to put it on move and then push this in just a little bit. This is the look that I'm going for, something like this right here. So I'm going to draw a new action line. I'm just going to move this out to the side so I can draw a new one. And 
with these lines when we draw them out we can click and drag and it's going to snap from that object to another piece of the object so you can see it's given me this angle that i'm kind of looking for here uh, in order to duplicate this object as i move i can hold down control click on this middle button and if i hold down shift while i do this it's going to give me a new copy hold down control and then shift it's going to give me a new copy control and then hold down shift and it's going to give me a new copy so i'm going to put it on draw and i'm going to get rid of my mask so now you can see i've got these pieces and i want to rearrange this entire thing as a group so i can hold down control and drag a marquee around here and get this masked off and we've already looked at masking so you can hit control i to do the inverse of that so now i've got this uh, section these pieces uh, isolated here so now i can put it on my move brush and i can take the whole entire um, section and i can move it around and i might want this to be sticking out a little bit more here so i can rotate this out slightly like this i can maybe pull this out a little bit more and if i click and drag here make this my new pivot point and then rotate in just a little bit and i'm going to click and drag a line from here to here see if I can't pull that out a little bit more I'm just trying to build some kind of shapes that look like uh, maybe ribbing or something like that and they're a little bit too long so we've uh, looked at in the other videos how we can shorten this so I can actually take the move uh, brush or the transpose line click and drag this here I'm gonna move this up to where it works correctly here and this will become my new pivot point I'm gonna move this up to the top and I'm gonna hold down shift while I drag that down and you can see how it's going to shorten that shape there I'm gonna click and drag here and get this guy centered up in here so those results I like that I think that looks uh, pretty cool to me and that's kind of what I'm going for here so We've got a mask on this ball down here, so that's not moving at all. Um, what if we want to get these shapes just isolated all by themselves? So if we hold down Control and Shift and we click on an object, because we've got these different groups on there, it's going to hide everything else except for what we uh, click on. If we hold down Control Shift and click on the ball, it's going to give us the opposite of what we're looking at here. Okay, so these pieces are isolated right now at this point, and I want to get rid of that ball. So there's a tool, and it's called um, Delete Hidden, and it's under Geometry. So you can see we were in Subtool. Now we're going to drag down a little bit further. It's under Layers. Go to Geometry, and there is a button called Delete Hidden. So when we delete that, it's going to delete it away. Now, if you have um, subdivision levels on your model, it's going to give you an error and say it can't, uh, can't delete because it's got uh, subdivision levels on it. Um, you, to get rid of the subdivision levels before you say delete hidden, you would just have to click this delete lower or delete higher. They're grayed out right now because there are no subdivision levels, but just in case you run, in, run into that, that's where those are sitting. Okay, so now we have our ribbing in here, and it's a separate object, but what if I want this mirror to cross? So there's a way to accomplish that. So under Subtools, there's a button right here. It's called Duplicate, right next to the Append button that we use to actually add a new object to the Subtools. Go ahead and click Duplicate, and you can see it's gonna add a new copy for us here. And it's gonna be exactly an exact duplicate so it's going to be right over the top of the other one so now we're going to use some of uh, ZBrush's deformation tools so here we are in sub tool we're going to drag up a little bit until we see deformation go ahead and click on that and you can see there's a mirror and there's a direction for X Y or Z we want to mirror across the X plane so that's already turned on for us so all we have to do is hit mirror and X is already turned on so now we have uh, an object on this side and we have an object on this side and now we're getting a little closer so let's go back to the to the subtool palette if we click um, 
this top subtool here, which is just another name for an object that we have, there's a uh, way that we can merge this object down with this object. You can see right here, there's a button called merge down. So let's go ahead and merge these two together. It's going to tell you that you can't un undo this process. So just hit OK. And you can see now that we've got these two objects um, and they're they've been merged down together. It's all one object now at this point. If you want to check this out in isolation, there's a solo button here, which is kind of cool. You can turn this on and off. It comes in quite handy whenever you're working with a, a lot of different pieces on your model and you want to just isolate and look at just one particular object. You can go ahead and click on this solo button. So you can see we've got our objects that are, um, you know, they've been uh, merged down together and it's a uh, seen as one object at this point. So at this point we could turn this mesh into a DynaMesh by going to Geometry. We've already looked at that. We could turn this uh, new model that we have into a DynaMesh and we can start adding, subtracting away from that if you want to. But let's say we want to get this uh, to be one model again with this entire body that we have. So we would just go to the top subtool here and we would use the merge down button that we just looked at. So now we have our model with the new ribbing on there and it's considered a one piece model at this point. But if we hit uh, F and then hit shift F, you can see we've got our different groups on. So now we're back to where we were at with the uh, DynaMesh. So let's go under geometry and DynaMesh is going to be turned off now because we've made a completely new object. So we've got to redo the DynaMesh and set that up. So I'm going to take the blur, put that down to zero and put a resolution up of um, 512, I think is where we were at with the resolution on that. Now I could turn this on. Um, I can keep groups on. Remember if I keep groups on, it's going to make this a separate object when it gets remeshed and this is going to be a separate object and this is going to be a separate object when it gets remeshed. I would like the ribbing to be one piece with the body. So I'm going to turn on group real quick to make sure that this holds. And again, if we hold on control and drag a marquee in the viewport, that's going to remesh the object. But we need to get this group and this group seen as one group so this doesn't keep us from uh, remeshing the way that we're looking for. And I actually just turned the DynaMesh on. So if we hold on Control and Shift, we can click on this little ribbing and that's going to show just that section. If we hold on Control and Shift and click on it again, it's going to bring back everything except for those ribbings. And now let's go to the other side, hold down control shift and take away that visibility, hold down control shift and click on the body. And now we should have everything uh, but this piece here. And then that's what we want. So hold down control shift and drag a marquee in the open viewport. And that's going to give us the inverse of what we were looking at. So we need this body and this ribbing on this side and the ribbing on this side, we need we need those pieces to be one group. So we've looked at this already before, but let's go drag up, go to polygroups and say group visible. And you can see it's going to change a color to indicate that uh, we've made a new group and everything's all in one group. Now hold on control shift and just click in the open viewport once and it should bring back that piece up here on the head. And now we're ready to remesh again for DynaMesh. So hold down control, drag the marquee, and it should remesh for us. And you can see that it's kept uh, this piece separate because we have the groups turned on. This is one group and the body with the ribbing was another group. So it's actually incorporated that ribbing into the model and we have a one piece model now. So that was a um, just a real quick look at how we can add new subtools, add new pieces to our model. If you want to keep those separate, you can, but we just went through the exercise of actually taking that piece, 
creating it on one side, duplicating it, merging it down, and then actually incorporating all that work back into our original model if you're uh, looking for that kind of workflow.